Hi, it's Dennis Daly. A couple of years ago, I put together a one-man, one-hour comedy album and shared it with my friends. Ten or twelve people have heard it. So I thought I'd put it here for you on YouTube. So here is part one. Hi, it's Dennis Daly. Uh, hi, Dennis. It's Bob Whitmore. What's up? Uh, just putting the finishing touches on some audio here I've been working on. What are you doing? Well, actually, that's why I called. I'm kind of concerned. Are you sure you want to release all that stuff to the public? Well, I don't see why not. I mean, you and Stu and a lot of other people are on there, but it's, it's stuff I've been working on, I guess, since I got out of high school. Well, I know you've uh, had fun over the years with all your friends. Yeah, I remember when you and I met. I was working in radio in Vincennes, Indiana, and they hired you to do spots for, uh... Ah, Big J's on Highway 41 South. Yeah, and that is where I met Stu. And then the three of us moved to Washington, D.C., and I started doing all kinds of home video and radio shows. Yes, that's where you met Marilyn and Howard Diamond. Uh, Del, Del, Delbus. Uh, Di, Di, Dis, oh, help me. Dicus. And uh, a lot of the collaborations of Shrevekman, I guess, were, were born in uh, the midst of all of that stupidity. Well, I wouldn't call it stupidity. We had a lot of fun. So anyway, I put all of that together, the Shrevekman stuff, the stuff you and Stu and I worked on, and some brand new stuff, and I am going to send the CD out to friends. Well, I guess it's okay with me, but remember, <laughs> I get 10%. Okay, Bob, hang up and listen. Hi-ho, Shrevekman! Now, from Shrevigman Sports, this weekend update. Hi, everybody. This is Bob Whitmore reporting at the end of three and a half days of continuous racing action and thrills in the nation's first annual transcontinental powered shopping cart race. I'm standing with a small group of people here along a little dinky section of U.S. Highway 40 right outside of Kremlin, Colorado, 12 of our 13 racing shopping carts went through here about two hours ago, but there's still a small crowd standing around waiting for hard luck Danny Bowling in the peanut special. He was last off the line, you know, in San Francisco and tangled with that parking meter yesterday in Craig, Colorado. Now stay tuned for more of the most unusual spectacle in racing. Tired of paying inflated prices for inferior grade tuna? Then try a can of Eastern Maryland's own tuna. Open a can of Waterman's tuna. Waterman's tuna contains only genuine aquatic material in related juices. Why, when you open a can of Waterman's tuna, you too will say, Woo! That has got to be Waterman's tuna. Look for the god Mercury on each can. And remember, if it's not Waterman's tuna, I'll eat it. Now let's get the latest results from Stu Fenman in the Timing and Scorers van. Thanks, Bob. Ben Harberman, who's in the Carry Out Associate Special, continues to lead the pack. And Art Nouveau, who's in the well, wi well Wide Well Lighted Aisle Special, I'll get it right. Well, wi well Lighted Aisle Special is in second place. Lloyd Ruby who continues to get up to near the front, then something happens. He's in third place. Now, you know, today four-wheel drive is the rage, but Lloyd is using one-wheel drive. Right now, the left side of his cart is running about nine seconds ahead of the right side. Now, as we cross the northern suburbs of Denver, we may have some weather problems, so let's go to meteorologist Randall Humus. Randall? Thanks, Stu. How your racing shopping carts managed to negotiate the Rocky Mountains of that storm? I have no idea. They should be well prepared for what is ahead tonight, that simply light rainstorm, as they go through the Denver suburbs. Now, this is forecastologist Randall Humus with the exclusive Econo Weather Forecast. Thanks, Randall. Now, Bob, back to you. Back again tomorrow with more as nearly relentless coverage continues right here on this station. This is Shrevigman, your network for the 2016 Winter Olympics. Every fall in the little European town of Sasu Bunur, great wine merchants from around the world gather to pick the fine grapes that will be turned into fine wines that will be served on fine tables everywhere. Did you ever wonder when all the haggling is over and all the decisions are made, which grapes are picked last? 
consistently year after year. These grapes are combined to form Classique Marginal. From the Région de Bismol and Provence Nozieux of France comes Classique Marginal. You'll savor the price and leave the taste to others. Classique Marginal, now available in the United States, imported by American Dregs Limited. Buy it at Instant Eddie's, Speed Alive, Vamoose Marts, Move On Marts, Friendly Fast Freddy's, Hash and Cash, Buy It and Beat It stores, Pay and Proceed, and at every other 7-Eleven. Hi, I'm Dennis Daly, and welcome to Computers in the Workplace, brought to you by the Abacus 2000 computer, the computer that guarantees you infinite backup because every other file contains every other file. This week we're on the road again. We're on the 11th floor of a high-rise office building in Washington, D.C., standing in front of the sturdy mahogany doors of Associated International Press. Now, you may not know who they are, but much of the news you hear on CNN, uh, CNBC, Fox News, it all comes out of the huge newsroom behind the doors. And we have been given entree to interview some of the people here because they've just switched over to the new Abacus 2000 system. So let's ring the doorbell. Associated International Press. Hi, it's uh, Dennis Daly with Computers in the Workplace. Oh, we're very busy. Oh, yes, you're, you're in for the uh, radio show. Yeah, I'll, I'll buzz you in. Okay, thank you. Let's go inside now and greet some of the people who are working for Associated International Press. As I look into this huge room, all I see on the far side of the room is a gentleman sitting on a, a piano bench, it looks like, at a card table with a computer and a... Hello, sir? Sir, it's uh, it's the radio show. Well, bring your mic over here. I'm busy. Well, let's go over to where that uh, lone gentleman is sitting. He seems to be the only person uh, working here at Associated International Press. Uh, sir, what is your name? Uh, yes, it's uh, Robert W. Whitmore. Well, don't get me wrong. I, I expected there to be an awful lot of people here. Well, uh, young man, it's a sad tale. You see, there used to be several thousand employees at this venerable company worldwide. We won Peabody's and Pulitzer's and supplied the world with news. But then last year, they decided to buy that Abacus 1000 computer system. And the first thing you know, they... They didn't need a lot of us, and now they've upgraded to the Abacus 2000, and I'm afraid on the night shift here, it is just yours truly. Gee, that's, uh, that's a shame. I guess a lot of people lost their jobs. Well, we still have a 12th floor full of executives. They still have their luncheons and their um, monogram golf balls, but down here on the 11th floor, it's pretty sparse. I hate to say this, but you sound pretty bitter. Well, I dare say you'd be bitter, too, if all your friends got fired. They bought some antiquated computer system that keeps logging you out all the time and expect you 10 hours a night to supply the world with news. I feel like a night watchman. Well, don't feel too bad, Mr. Whitmore. At least the Abacus computer has that wonderful F2 key. Let me show you no, no, some no, of the no, things no, you no, can no, do no, with no, that no, key. Oh, no, you put... No, please! I don't see what I did wrong. I was just making your screen brighter. Yeah. That is not what F2 does around this godforsaken place. Here, let come on over here to the printer and let me show you what's going to happen here in about three seconds. All right, let me catch up with you here. Just right, right here on this printer? Yes, I'm afraid this printer and about 6,000 others around the world. Hold on, now watch. Something uh, supposed to happen? Now, just be patient. That Abacus 2000 is so damn slow. Oh, now they're... Okay, now, when it's not printing, just rip that off and read it to me. Okay, it says, here is a bulletin from Associated International Press. That's all it says. Where, where's the bulletin? All right, you tell me. You're the one who pushed the darned F2 button. I don't understand what you're saying, Mr. Whitmore. What I am saying is that you sent out the code to 6,000 people around the world telling them that a damn bulletin is coming and there isn't any. Well... 
can't you retract that? No, you see, that damned Abacus 2000 won't let us back up on anything. So, so I, what, I don't know what to do. This has never happened before? Not on my watch. Well, could you send something out as a bulletin? I guess I'm going to have to. Uh, maybe we could make something up. It's my last week here. I really don't care anymore. What? How about a disaster? What kind of disasters do you like? Oh, boy, I get to pick it. Okay, a plane crash. How about a big one? Oh, 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 oh a 747 goes down, okay? No, no, wait. Come back over here because I got to sit down here at the computer. Let's dictate this. Let's, let's make this good. Okay, how, how about this? A 747 jetliner. Oh, I like it already. Uh, loaded with nuns. Bingo! That's on a big scale, and it's got pathos. On its way back from Rome, crashed... Where could we have it crash? Yeah, I just noticed on the chart today, we don't have any stations in South Africa. They'd have no way to check it. Oh, okay. How about this? Crashed into the White Mountains of South Africa. You ought to be a writer. With a complete loss of life. And I got it. That's all you need? Well, let me put more details to follow here at the uh, here at the end of this. This is really going to whet people's appetites. Well, I'm sure we can think of something later. Okay, I just pushed the send button. Now, come on, let's come over here to the printer now and watch this thing destroy the entire company. Boy, this is fun. Boy, look at that go. I've never done anything like that by remote control before. Here, uh, let me tear it off when it stops here. Ooh, I like the formatting on this. A PAC 747 jetliner loaded with nuns returning from a visit to the Pope has crashed into the White Mountains of South Africa. More details to follow. Well, you know, I think this is going to be the best or worst night of my life. Boy, you know, you just really type like crazy there. You, you really burn up the keys. Well, thank you very much. I have uh, won the Flying Fingers Award several times here. It's not quite a Pulitzer. You're pretty good yourself with that F2 key. I only have one question. What happens if you don't send out anything else? Well, uh, I am going off shift here in a few minutes. It'll Leave Shirley in a real bind, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Yes, you know, it's been quite an evening. Well, the only bad thing about it is here we are sponsored by the Abacus 2000 and you trashed it. I'm sorry I hit your F2 key. Well, at least you didn't hit the F3. Well, what happens if I reach over and do that? Uh... Why in God's name do you have to be so cooperative? What did I do? Well, you see, to make extra money, management has me do seven things at one time, and one of them is I'm updating the files of Encyclopedia Britannica, and everything I've been working on tonight now has your damn story about that 747 embedded in it. Oh, you're crazy. Like what? Well, pick a topic. All right, how about George Washington? Okay, let me call it up here on the computer. All right, now read what it says on the screen. George Washington, sometimes called the father of our country, first president of the United States, died in the crash of a 747. You're out of your mind. No, you see, you just shouldn't come into people's places and lay your hands on things. Okay, oh, no, that can't be everywhere. Look up something like the w World War II. Okay, this has got to be better. World War II, the second of two major worldwide conflicts in the 20th century, ended when the United States dropped a loaded 747. Am I in the twilight zone? I'll tell you what, let's look up this company. Let's look up Associated International Press. Okay, Associated International Press, founded in 1906, was at one time the largest news-gathering organization in the world. After severe downsizing, one night it went out of business when it erroneously reported... Okay. Oh, no. Who could be calling this time of night? Uh, maybe you have an affiliate in South Africa. Okay, maybe I better answer it. Here we go. Let me put it up on the box. Associated International Press, World Desk, quit more speaking. Hey, uh, Bob, it's Dick Tillman, the afternoon sluggo. Uh, I couldn't sleep. I'm just watching CNN. Apparently there's been a horrible plane crash in South Africa. Can you take care of it? Uh, you know, Dick, I think I already have. Whew. Bob, what a night. What, what are you typing now, the rest of the bulletin? No, no, I'm typing a little something else here. How many ends are there in resignation? This program has come to you from the Schrevigman Radio Network, distributed via Ursat Satellite. 
Visit Williamsburg. Go to any old-style colonial home. Spend the night in a Boston bed and breakfast. You'll see it everywhere. In candlesticks, plates and dishes, even picture frames. We're talking about pewter. In early America, pewter was the metal of choice for hundreds of everyday objects. Some of this early pewter was ornately carved, but most of it was just plain functional. You see, the problem that early pewter artisans had was that pewter could only be grooved. Now there's been an incredible breakthrough in the pewter maker's art. Now it's possible to flute pewter. Yes, soon, fluted pewter will be the rage in fine home furnishing stores. And the brand you'll see the most is cutesy pewter. Cutesy pewter made by modern day pewter craftsmen to exacting standards. Why, when you examine this fine product, you'll say it's the cutest fluted pewter you've ever seen. Cutesy pewter, on sale soon in selected stores. Boy, I'm glad I'm not dialing 911, you know. You call some of these 800 numbers, you don't know whether you're going to end up with somebody in Tulsa or Timbuktu. Glad I could serve you, Shrevingman Car Rental. Uh, yes, uh, I've... Uh, hi, this is old Bob Whitmore. I'd like to uh, rent a car there in Oakland. That's San in... Francisco, Mr. Whitmore. Uh, I'm sorry, SFO, uh, San, San, San Francisco International. Yeah. I'm going to be arriving on Saturday, August 7th at 10.30 p.m. on Delta Airlines Flight 887. Now, yeah. I don't care about size of car. I just need the cheapest thing I can get, this tiny little car. Uh, and by the way, I don't have any discounts. I'm not with the Tribe AAA or AARP anymore. I am in the Delta Frequent Flyer program. Okay. What is important, though, is that I get the cheapest thing. Okay. Now, I'm going to keep the car for one calendar week, turning it in on the night of August 14th, about 9 o'clock. Right. I don't figure I'm going to need any special options. Right. I will not be leaving the U.S. with the car. I'm going to decline all coverages and bring it back full. Okay, and uh, what is your name, sir? Uh, well, as I, I, th I think I said earlier, it's uh, Robert W. Whitmore. And uh, where will you be picking up the car? Sa San Francisco, SFO. A and, and on what date? I will be needing the car on August 7th. I'll need the, uh, the time that you'll be arriving, sir. <sighs> At 10.30 p.m. Are you uh, flying in? I'm sure as hell not walking. Okay. Uh, could I have your airline and flight number? <sighs> Delta Flight 887. Now, do you have any kind of discounts? Uh, AAA, for example, or you sound like a senior citizen, uh, not to be offensive, but maybe you have AARP? I mentioned to you that I am no longer a member of AAA there, the American Auto Air, Auto Air, Automatic, oh, help me, Automobile, Automobile Association. Association, nor am I with the AARP. Okay, and uh, no other discounts? Uh, no, but I am a Delta Frequent Flyer. And uh, what size car do you want, uh, Mr. Whitmore? Uh, Whitmore. Look, all I want is the cheapest, tiniest, slummiest, little bitty, tiny, me and one piece of luggage and a steering wheel. I see. And uh, once you rent that car, how long are you going to keep it? I intend to keep that car for an entire week, if you don't mind. Do you need any uh, special options, standard transmission, uh, anything, uh, extra seat belts? Oh, God forbid! Now, uh, there is a prohibition against driving our rental cars into Mexico. I wouldn't drive into that godforsaken country for all the pesos on Earth. Now, would you like to buy our collision damage waiver? It's only $14 a day. I am going to decline all coverages and use my own insurance. Thank you. Now, we have a special on gasoline. You don't have a problem if I fill that sucker up at the first gas station I find, do you? Okay, sir. Let me get you a rate on that. Uh, Mr. Whitmore, uh, my computer has just uh, jammed. Can we start at the top? You can hear parts two and three also here on YouTube.